I was 18 at the time, and one day, I decided to go hunting. I had my shotgun and a bag of shells with me. I shot at a few birds and rabbits here and there. I was in the middle of the woods by myself, and I was about to pack it in, when I heard some strange rustling in the bushes. I then caught a glimpse of what I thought was a dogman. It appeared roughly seven feet tall and had a dog-like face with really long hair. It also had a long tail like that of a wolf. I began to panic and I pointed my gun at the creature. I shot at it and it let out a high-pitched scream. I then ran as fast as I could. It didn't chase me until I ran back to my truck though. I got into my truck and started it. Then I drove off. I went home and never told anybody about it. I believe that dogmen are more common than people even realize. I don't know what the dogmen wanted, but I'm terrified and I don't think I will go back to those woods hunting ever again. I knew all about dogmen originally because my uncle has had several encounters with them, so I'm familiar with the concept and what they look like. I never thought though in a million years I would ever run into one myself. I'm glad that I wrote down my encounter. It's nice to know that I'm not the only person in the world that has ever actually seen one. I mean, hell, before this, I thought I would never see one. But I guess I'm wrong. In 1991, I was lucky enough to be able to take a trip to Europe with my parents. I was very young at this time, but I still remember some of the things that had happened. I was staying in a hotel in London, England, and I was in my own room, lying in bed, looking out the window. The window was open. The window was open. I wanted to go to sleep, but I kept hearing a sound outside, a sound that kept drawing my attention. It was a sound that was a mix of a squeal and a gurgle. I remember that it was coming from somewhere in the air over the nearby street. So, I kept looking out the window to try and find a source, and I see a shadow pass over the street. I looked up to see that it was indeed looked like a gargoyle. It was a little over a few feet tall and appeared to have bat-like wings and almost a black beak-shaped like object on its face. It had a long spaded tail. It appeared dark, smoky gray in color and it was flying straight towards me in the window. I remember that it got so close, I could see vivid detail in its face. It had yellow eyes with dark gray, black metal slanted pupils in each eye. It also had dark gray lips and humanistic features. It even had kind of pointed ears like that you would see devils have. It had a mouth that was wide open, revealing several rows of tiny pointed teeth, kind of like how fish have and it was making this awful squeal as it came towards me flying. Now, this was kind of closer to night, so there wasn't a whole lot of light out, but light enough that the buildings were emanating light that I could see this thing. It was going to fly straight towards the glass and come into my room. I remember that I was extremely frightened. I screamed at the top of my voice. It flew right past the window, dodging us. I remember that it was so close to the glass I even saw its reflection. I remember that there was a flash of white light behind it as soon as it followed. I remember that it flew right past the window over the street, over to some other buildings, and finally disappeared. I closed the window so quickly and was so frightened that I cried myself to sleep that night. Of course, my parents were rich, so they had their own room and thought I would benefit at the age of seven of me having my own. So. I was all alone. The next morning, I was still upset and I told my parents about what I had seen and then I told them that I had seen a gargoyle. They found it very odd and they did not believe me. They kept asking me what I was doing out of bed. I told them that I had heard the sound and I saw this thing that I thought was a gargoyle. They told me it was probably a dream but I knew it was not a dream. It was all very real. It happened and I have never been able to forget. In fact, I'm still afraid of gargoyles. I keep using the term gargoyle because I'm not sure what else to call them. It was some demonic humanoid. 
That's all I know how to describe it as, and I remember, even at that age, it scared me badly. One night, when I was in the Navy, back in 1982 or 1983, I was on night watch. I was stationed in the Persian Gulf. On that night, I was standing watch as the quartermaster, and I was on the starboard bridge wing, looking at the horizon. There were about six of us on watch, and the sky was extremely clear. It was a moonless night. The stars were very bright, and the sea was very calm. Up ahead of us, I saw a very bright light rising up out of the sea. It was not a plane. It was very bright. I could not tell if it was the reflection of the moon or a star, but I was so fascinated by this light that I wanted to see where it was coming from. I kept looking and looking and I saw the light get bigger and I could tell it was coming from underneath the water. Some very large object was rising from the water emanating a very low blue colored light. It was then that I noticed it was a round object, maybe about a hundred or so feet in diameter, and it was rising very slowly under the sea. It was big and very dark in the center, like a black shadow. Only the light of the stars reflected on it, and it itself emitted light, if that makes any sense. I watched it rise from the sea for about 10 or 15 minutes as it slowly ascended into the sky. Did I mention how round it was? And it was so large that I could see it, even when I turned my head. I remember that I was so fascinated, I forgot to even call the captain. I only remember to tell the bridge, watch, standard, to inform the captain when it reached its highest point. I watched it rise up over the horizon. It rose up and then just stopped and disappeared, before hanging out in the air, all the while making a very low, low humming sound. It was about a hundred or so feet up in the sky, out of the sea, before I heard it disappear. I watched for about a few more minutes afterwards, waiting for this thing to appear again in the sky. I was in so much amazement and terrified at the same time, holding on to the platform railing. I could not believe what I was seeing. So I told others, guys, you gotta see this. They came out and stood beside me to watch it. All of us had seen it. I mean, it was so big, how could you have not have seen it? I mean, none of us missed it. I remember talking to everybody afterwards and we were all very quiet. Nobody spoke. It was just hanging there in the air, and then suddenly, when it went away, we were all kind of expecting it to return. But instead, it just disappeared. I remember that it was so fast that none of us could even imagine it would have gone. I was also scared to tell the captain, and scared to sleep for about the next week. But when I finally told the captain, he had told me that, well, there were other ships in the area that thought that it was some kind of secret experimental UFO craft. I didn't buy the explanation. We all believe that we saw a UFO. I mean, I don't know what else to call it. I have no idea what it was. But I am positive that it was not a military craft or a plane of any kind. Here's my story. It happened when I was about four or five. I am now 30. I was living in an apartment complex here in St. Louis. I had an apartment facing a playground, so I would always be out there playing. One night, I was sitting out there and it was now getting pretty dark. I was the only kid out there at the time. And I see this creature come out of the woods. It was human-like, but I remember thinking even at that age it was not a human. It had a beak and it was all black and kind of slithered in its movements. It was so tall that it easily was able to leap over the fence into the playground. It walked around, away from me, and I just had the feeling it was looking for somebody, or looking for me. I remember thinking I had to run. So, at four or five, you can imagine how terrified I was when I ran inside and woke up my mom. I told her that I had not just seen a monster outside, but that it was coming for me. I don't remember if I told her what it was or not. Maybe I told her it was a goblin. But I do remember that it scared her. She made me go back out there with her. 
and she told me that there was nothing out there, and that I made her get up for nothing. So I got scolded for making things up. I remember thinking, though, that it was still there, that it was just hiding, waiting for her to leave so it can come looking for me. And I was still terrified. But after that, I stayed out of that playground for quite a while. The creature looked like some strange mix between a carnivorous bird like a vulture and a human, or something. I just remember thinking at four or five years old how ugly it was, and being at that age, how scared I was. Look, I really don't have an explanation for where it came from or why it exists, but I do believe that this thing is out there still, and there might be more of them. I have to live with this memory now forever, and I am a firm believer in things that are not supposed to exist, but do. I'm a believer because I myself had this experience. In 2000, while driving home from work in Mineral, Idaho, which is about 70 miles southwest of Salt Lake City, I came over the hill just east of Parawuna Pass, going around 10 p.m. at night. Looking south from this point, the road dropped suddenly into Bonneville Salt Flats. On the road right below me, there were these six humanoids running down the road shoulder to shoulder. They were all very tall and thin, with long black hair and pointed ears. Each appeared to be wearing tattered robes. They moved quickly. Out of freaked curiosity, I began to slow down and watch them to try and get a better look when I suddenly see one of these things turn and look right at me. And then slowly, all of them very slowly turned and faced me directly. We were still 30 to 50 feet away from each other. Now I'm very creeped out, and so I floored it, made the turn, and never looked back. It was a while before I ever told my son and others about what I saw. And finally, years later, I felt enough courage to share my experience on Facebook. My cousin, who lives 14 miles south of the pass, interviewed her elderly neighbor about werewolves spending time in the area, since they firmly believe that there are werewolf creatures out there. The neighbor said they chased her in the mountains when she was young, killed her friend, stole her family's animals, but never admitted it to the police because the dog befriended one of these creatures who ran off. She said most farmers around there had a greyhound because these creatures were always stalking and looking for more prey. But apparently, these greyhound dogs would keep these creatures at bay. You could still hear them howling some nights. Well, about 30 years prior, while on an evening deer run, I was out with my kids and came across a fresh kill in the sagebrush. This kill was torn into pieces, shredded like cheese. So, either there are some sort of wolf-like creatures walking around, or maybe there's truth to these skinwalker shapeshifter beings out here in the desert. One thing is for sure, you have to be careful out here. It can get very dangerous, and if you are not prepared, well, prepare for bad things to happen. Before I end this email, I'll tell you about one quick encounter I remember one of my family members telling me about, at least that they thought there was a large coyote walking around their house at night. One night, my family member was actually out on her porch and said that the coyote thing was following her and their small dogs. She got scared, ran into the house, and so after wandering around some more, this thing, what she thought was an upright coyote, just ups and leaves. One of our other relatives had hunted in New Mexico for coyotes before and he came and visited with her and said he was very familiar with this kind of evil spirit and told her he could sense its presence all around her trailer and all over the land they lived on, that this being had purposefully left its mark there to let others know not to come here. Really scary stuff, honestly. When I was 16 years old, I was living in a small town called Mountain View, Arkansas, in a small house that my mother and I had rented. I was up late one night and I was all alone. I was going to bed and I heard a noise coming from the backyard. I went to check it out and saw this black figure walking towards the house from the wood line. It appeared to be about seven feet tall with a long curved beak face and large glowing yellow eyes. 
It had bat-like wings on the back and large talon-like claws. Terrified, I ran back inside, locking the door. I wish it would have had a camera or cell phone to take a picture, but it was like 2004, so I didn't have a cell phone yet. I'm not sure what it was, a demon or a bat creature or what. I think it maybe might have been a demon, maybe a gargoyle, but I'm not sure. This wouldn't be the first time, though, that something strange and I had run in together. I have had many paranormal experiences. The two that stand out the most are just before this sighting occurred. I was still 16 years old at the time, and I was home alone, and I was asleep. I woke up to see a black silhouette figure standing over me. But this figure wasn't an average-sized man. It was about 7 to 8 feet tall, and I had only what I can describe to you as burning red eyes that were filled with hate and malice, like it wanted to torment me and hurt me physically in any way it could. It was just radiating this aura off of it. You know how you can get a sense for good and bad people? Well, this thing was just giving off a really bad aura. And I tried screaming, but my body would not let me. I was paralyzed and I tried moving, but I could not. I was so scared. The figure just stared at me, and then it disappeared. I wasn't able to move for another few minutes, and when I could, I was terrified and freaked out. I did not even feel my legs. I felt like I was going to pee my pants. I just wanted to curl up in a ball and cry, but I could not. I was too scared to even do that. Eventually, I fell asleep, but couldn't wait to tell my mom about what had happened. She believed me, thankfully. I guess, come to find out that she had a heaping helping of crazy things happen to her too while she was in the same house. From seeing spirits to seeing what she described to me as little imp-like creatures that tried to torture her early in the morning by prodding her with what she tells me as sharp objects. She never specified what she meant by that. I was young, so I didn't know what to do. I started praying that night and the next day, I went to the library and really started reading the Bible. I read it and began to pray a little more. I still prayed and read the Bible like every day for a while, and it definitely seemed to help. I don't want to say I was religious or anything, but I had an understanding of the spirituality of it. I mean, I did have a lot of experiences with spirits and angels from my dreams and meditations. I definitely wasn't as scared as I was before, but... I knew that something just wasn't right. I began practicing yoga and meditation shortly thereafter, and that felt like it was helping. Encounters at that point seemed to really come to a slowdown, and same with my mother. This was all shortly before we saw this physical entity, what I would describe as a gargoyle-like bat creature, and it had a beak and these nasty hideous features, so maybe not that. Part of me believes it was the evil of this house that was allowed to manifest into a physical form to come after me, because I had been doing something right by praying, and I guess it did not like that. Then, fast forward more. After my sighting of this thing and how terrifying it was, I find out my mom had been seeing what she tells me are goblins. They're these hideous little creatures, maybe two to three feet tall, the size of a toddler walking around her room at night. She'll wake up to them, holding her down, trying to have their way with her, biting her, telling her they're going to kill her. Just really horrible stuff. Anyway, we put up with this stuff for about another year, off and on before we finally ended up moving. I remember because it was right at my senior year of high school when we moved out of that house. I know it sounds crazy, but it's true. I've always believed that there is good and evil in the world, and I don't believe the devil is always going to be the one to come out the winner. I think God and the angels from the spirit realm are much, much stronger, and I believe if you have enough faith and you're open to the experience, then you can definitely see the other side. I don't think it's something that happens all the time, but I think you can experience it if you want to put the effort in. Now, I don't want to give out the details of the place we moved afterwards because I'm unsure of the location to be exact, but I'll just say this, it was much closer to town.
hide what lurks beneath. I know this isn't a normal story email that you're so accustomed to getting, but I found this article and I think you can appreciate it. I'm sure if you read it, your viewers can too. Here it is. Encounters with dogmen have been reported for years around the world, but in Scandinavia, they've been chronicled for as long as documented records have been kept. Jens Lechman has studied the dogmen, performing a statistical assessment on newspaper and folklore archives to identify areas where they have been seen. He also looked at ecosystems and demographics in a study intended to prove or falsify the dogmen. By diachronic measurements, sightings have occurred mostly in the fall with numbers peaking in October. The most frequently reported times are around 4 p.m. to 4 a.m. The size of the creatures, according to Lechman, range from 2 to 3 meters, and they are less commonly sighted near water. One distinguishing characteristic that makes the dogmen stand out from a common dog is a prolonged tail, facial features such as pointed ears, and the defining factor of a creature being half man and half dog. However, a lot of it is also behavior. Local lore liken the creature to attack on livestock, horses, cows, and sheep. The local river may have been polluted because of large amounts of blood in the water by locals at one point hundreds of years ago. But the watershed for that river shows a large amount of white-tailed deer activity, giving the dogmen ample food opportunities. The animal most likely to attack livestock would be a stray wolf. Are wolves responsible for these sightings? They are territorial animals. Human activity gives them an even greater sense of urgency. Lechman suggests that human encroachment is of importance when evaluating the behavior of these creatures. And he says this, I ruled out the idea of the dogman is a dog-wolf hybrid. I found it quite odd that these things occurring in the northernmost areas of Sweden, such as dogs being found decapitated. Several hunters reported not seeing deer, even in their designated hunting areas. Other reports of strange footprints in snow have been dismissed as bear trails, even when tracks don't belong to any Russian or polar bear found in Sweden. Lechman suggests that, in some instances, the creature may be more human-like, but he cannot narrow down a specific description. Many creatures described by eyewitness reports could be considered humanoid bipedal animals, which occur quite often throughout history and have even been associated with the paranormal. At least one other researcher suggests it may be more of a problem with misidentification than something paranormal. Cryptozoologist Johan Randwall contested Lechman's claim that these creatures could not be a dog and wolf crossbreed. It's known that animals can become fixed in certain inbred or regionalized structures, like many domestic dogs, but the facts still prove that crossbreeds are not a common thing, and not only must be two species. Coyotes and dogs look more like dogmen than, for instance, a bottlenose dolphin. Considering that forming hybrid species is thousands or even millions of years old, to place a doubt over a well-insured claim doesn't hold much water. Perhaps this serves as a warning if you request people moving to rural areas to not further overpopulate the landscape. Regardless, whether these are really dogmen or not something is occurring in the region for people to be so interested in. I was crossing railroad tracks when I looked up, and I caught my first glimpse ever of a cryptid. It was a wolf, peering through trees on my left. I briefly caught my second visual, this time straight on, of the same creature crouched, looking at me. There was a sudden blur of motion, and this wolf was running toward me. I hardly had enough time to think, and so I ran to my left. I turned around, just in time to see this thing running toward me, and this thing was pursuing me hot on two legs, the same way an Olympic runner would run directly at you. Unrelenting, I held my breath and dove into a small pond that was right near me, hoping that this would deter this thing from chasing me. I know it sounds strange, but when you're in fight or flight mode, you do some questionable things. This thing stops and hesitates, unsure of what to do next. I stayed below the surface of the pond, trying my best to hold my breath and to not surface. All I could see was the faint outline of this thing just standing there, waiting for me to surface. The thought of what was chasing me two seconds ago 
then not doing anything made me really question my reality. I waited for almost two minutes before I felt my lungs about to burst, and as I came to the surface, this thing was now completely out of sight. After looking around, I couldn't see it, but man oh man, I could feel it. I just felt this heavy presence, this lingering feeling looming in the area, and I knew it had to be close by. I knew if I did not act now, I was getting out of here alive. So I quickly pulled myself to shore and made a break for it. Immediately, I hear this thing bursting out of the bushes and starts pursuing me yet again. I'm really not sure, looking back, why a mere pond and me being submerged in water with it having anything to do with it stopping to chase me. Maybe it knew I was hiding, so it too took the chance to also hide and wait for me. What I can tell you is patience is virtue. I must have been a thorn in its proverbial side. Something made this thing tire of me quickly because it gave up on me as a meal and left. I gave myself a fair distance of space and waited for what seemed to be the right moment to give my legs enough freedom to start running again. I was still tucked in behind a few trees, just trying to catch my breath. It was then that I heard that sound of this wolf's claws pushing against the soil, the thudding of the legs coming towards me. It was coming back again. I knew I could not wait around. I could hear it coming back, unsure of what to do exactly. I peeked out behind a large tree in concealment as this thing was sprinting towards me again, knocking a massive tree down as it went. All I could think of was if it gets any closer. I'm a goner. No one to stand witness but me and the animal's next meal. This thing didn't stop. It was fixated on bringing home to me and killing me. As it furled down to make another leap, all I could think of was, God, please, let it fall. Leave me be. Those prayers must have been answered as this blur's body fell into a softer overgrown area behind me, in the earth. I turned around to see this creature falling down into this small pit, covered in mulch and pine and tree limbs. Immediately, I began retreating back the way I came. I picked up my pace and did not stop running until I was safely in my car. I could hear this thing screaming and howling the entire way, pissed that it had lost me. Whatever it was, was some unknown creature with an ape-like body shape, connected to the deaths of two people affiliated with the same people connected with the first death of a professor and a student. Someone took pictures of film associated with the deaths. I knew my friend who was working with them back in the woods in 1964. There's something going on, and it's important for somebody to finally find out and really expose what's going on here. I am of high moral standard, and personally, with a deep understanding of the spiritual world. Too much to explain here in a small email, so I'll cut to the chase. This is my eyewitness encounter of this hominid creature. May 6th, 2017. I was finishing my loop around as I was walking home from the market, where I had just finished doing errands. From the corner of my eye, I saw movement in a nearby tree. Upon looking, there was my first great sighting. This humanoid monkey-like creature swung down between the branches, as if weightless, and then dropped down very quickly, disappearing behind the tree. The creature crouched at first and was swaying side to side, all while staring at me. It appeared weightless, like I said. Once I saw it smoothly sit on the limb, it immediately leapt away and vanished. The drop was fascinating and quick. I don't know if it was followed or chased by something bigger, but I assume it was not alone. There was no repeated sighting, and no real noise accompanied this sighting, so I'm not sure. Another interesting thing, too, was I could see, at least I thought, was another figure at my peripheral on my left as I was walking, too. Once I look over, though, it was always gone. I'm not sure how to describe such a strange creature. However, I do know for me personally, that is something I will never forget. 
I only saw it for a brief moment, and have even questioned myself. But it happened. This was my second encounter up to this point. As a few weeks ago, I experienced something brush past my legs in my sleep, and I felt its physical presence bruise me while in a deep trance-like state. I believe the reoccurring sightings I have of the same type of being or beings is of high spiritual importance. Having this encounter, I have since relocated to Mesa, Arizona back in February, and I'm keeping my eye out for what may be more of these things. I was out camping one evening by a large lake, all by myself. The night was beautiful, and it was a serene, quiet evening. All of a sudden, I felt this breeze of extremely cold air, and a presence walking up beside me, but I saw nothing. As I feel the presence draw closer, I could hear the noise of heavy breathing. I assumed it was a bear, and I turned on my flashlight to look around. I didn't see anything but I could feel something. I could hear breathing, but there was no signs of anything near me. Completely unnerved by this newfound sighting or experience, I sat up and decided it was time to retire to my tent. I quickly jumped in, afraid of what was going to happen. I stayed in my tent the rest of the night, clutching hold of my flashlight and a tiny pocket knife should anything happen. Attempting to calm myself, I distracted myself with thoughts of remembering camping as a child. Then, I heard two loud screeches just outside my tent. Then nothing. Shortly thereafter, I started hearing these loud noises approaching my tent in the night. They sounded large, and whatever it was that I was hearing. I was panicking, thinking two really large men were going to come, invade, and kill me. The sounds would stop abruptly, just outside my tent, then walk away and return at another angle. Several times this went on. I could hear three separate footsteps and sounds. The whole encounter lasted for several hours. It felt like an eternity. I thought I was going crazy. I just wanted it to stop. There were all sorts of other strange noises. Some of them were screams and growls, while the others were strange stomping noises. Then it would go silent for a moment, and I hear what sounded like a large branch being ripped off a tree right by me. Then, I hear it getting kicked off into the forest. Now, not only was I scared because of what I was experiencing, but I felt like whatever this was is trying to intimidate me and wanting to hurt me. Finally, it stopped, and I could not keep it together. I tried calling out for help, just hoping somebody else was around but I heard nothing but me. I felt as though I was completely helpless and all alone. I knew I was doomed. This had been going on for hours now at this point, and these things were coming back and forth around my campsite. They were always circling my tent. It's like they were waiting for the right moment to strike. You could imagine I was on edge like crazy. And finally, the noises eventually ceased for a period of time. I wasn't sure what was going to happen. They could still be out there watching me, but I was not going to take any chances or risks. I figured that staying put in my tent was the best course of action, at least until sunrise. I waited out the entire night in my tent, completely frozen in fear. Morning eventually came, and I had not slept at all. Thoroughly exhausted, I decided to hike my way out as soon as I could. Upon exiting my tent, the area around me was trashed. Huge branches were ripped off the large fir tree, about ten feet away from my tent. My supplies were thrown all over the campsite. Frightened but intrigued, I grabbed my stuff, hit the trail looking for a clear spot where I could escape, because I couldn't exactly remember the section of trail that I had hiked in. I only had the backpack that was salvageable, and of course my tent. Everything else outside was destroyed. Upon getting to my car more than just a mile away, I opened my trunk, put my gear inside. At the time, I had no idea what had happened the night before, but as I'm closing my trunk, getting ready to enter my car, 
I heard this horrific scream off in the distance. It sounded like a man's yell, but really deep and really loud. Like whatever made it had a huge set of lungs. I froze in place, listening for a few seconds. Then, out of nowhere, these strange noises start sounding off all around me. I felt immediate danger, and just like the night before, I realized if I didn't get in my car at that very moment, my life would be in danger. Terrified, I jumped in my car, walked out the doors, and left as fast as I could. Still hearing these noises echoing off in the distance, what did I hear the previous night? What did all of this mean? All I can say is that this experience left me completely overcome with fear, confusion, and amazement. I've never had an experience like that before. I still feel shaken about how such a large creature can move about at night, surround a tent like it did, and scare somebody, yet without ever being seen. There are theories and explanations for what it could have been, but I really have my doubts about most of them. I just don't think everybody has come up yet with a plausible answer. You have to be aware that how loud these were, intimidating and ferocious these things were. Whatever it was, I'm certain it's not a bear. Is, is it possible I encountered a Bigfoot? I was working a late night shift at a meat processing plant. My coworker and friend Sean and I were smoking a cigarette outside on break and just chatting away by our car when we hear something off in the trees right beside the parking lot. It naturally distracts us and we both turn our attention to what we just heard. I mean, it was pretty loud. All we could make out afterwards was a rustling of something big moving and some very faint breathing sounds, like somebody who smoked a pack a day their entire life incredibly raspy. We both give each other glances of puzzlement, figuring somebody was just maybe messing with us or maybe it was a homeless person. It was very weird. I mean, nobody could get in there. There was industrial barbed wire fencing and beyond the fencing was trees. The surrounding area was just thick woods that connected to a national forest, I believe. So, after glancing for maybe five or some more seconds, we're both just like, Huh. and we go back to chit-chatting. Then the next thing you know, we hear this loud crunch of a tree branch, followed by even more rapid deep breathing. We turn our attention again, and this time, we glance towards the side of the trees, and we see a thing. I say thing because I don't know what it was, but it was hunched over and then stood up to its full height. Sean and I both saw it, and Sean was so shocked he drops his cigarette. This thing was a large hairy creature, and might I add how ugly it was. It also appeared to have a snout and had deep set in eyes. This thing was well over six feet tall, maybe no more than eight or nine feet. It was pretty tall. It had kind of grayish black fur, and the more we saw its face, the more hideous it was. To better explain what it looked like, Imagine orangutan, or alf, if you remember alf. It was like a monkey crossed with a wolf. It was just ugly. It had some more human-like traits, while others were more canine-like. I remember two large rows of pointed teeth. It, too, had a very wide snout. I guess think like alf, but add some canine features to it, and make it a little bit more scary-looking. It slowly bent down, looked up at us, and stood up right away against the fencing, staring at us. It just glared, and after a couple more moments, it turned away and went back into the trees. I looked at Sean, and he looked at me. He was terrified, and we used this as an opportunity to run back inside and end our break. We told our boss and other co-workers nothing. We finished out our shifts terrified out of our minds that we saw this thing. After work, Sean and I would only talk about it briefly, that we never saw anything like it before and nobody would ever believe us, even if we did tell somebody. We talked to each other once in a while about it, but not really. I mean, we generally don't mention what we saw, and especially to anybody else. We do still hang out on break and talk about things like we normally did, but not like this.
I don't think we'll ever be as comfortable as we were. The sighting has kind of changed us. I'm really not sure what we saw that evening. Maybe you could help me out. My daughter, 12 years old at the time, had stayed overnight with me, and we had fallen asleep on the living room couch. We awoke around 7.15 a.m. to see this entity standing by the window. The first thing I noticed immediately was hair hanging down over its face and down the back of its head and neck. It was weird looking. It was covered in nasty matted hair and looked like an ugly dog. It was staring at us. I felt like I was paralyzed and could not get up off the couch. I was petrified to say the least. We had a staring competition for what seemed like forever, and I finally was able to scream. And just before it turned and walked away, my daughter had awakened and seen this thing too. She immediately became hysterical. She runs up to me and collapses on me crying. I phoned the police after it walked away, but they told me there was really nothing they can do about it. Well, a couple of nights later and we had completely forgotten all about the whole thing. My daughter's father had come to come pick her up for the weekend, and as he's getting her into his truck, I hear him start yelling, just as I got back in the house. I go back outside and I see this thing, the same thing we saw last night approaching my now ex-husband and daughter. I froze again and could not get my body into gear. I was so terrified I couldn't even move. My ex-husband pulls out his pistol and fires at it, hitting it in the chest. But the thing never flinched. It just kept coming. Eventually, it turned and began to walk off. He shot at it again in the back. But again, it didn't even flinch. It just walked off, up and over, up a hill. It never even stopped. The man always keeps a firearm on him. And I'm glad he did because who knows what this thing would have done had he not had a weapon. What I can't believe is that he shot it and this thing didn't even react. It was just evil. So he's flipping out, asking me if I saw that. And I start to tell him about how we just saw it at the window the other night. I asked him to follow me up into the house so I could show him with the situation and where I was when we had seen it. I showed him and we exited the house and he goes around and looks and you could see, which I didn't see, but there were impressions in the ground where this thing had been clearly standing. He seemed quite shocked, but at the same time, he seemed like he knew what he'd been seeing that night. There wasn't any feet prints, but you could just see something big and heavy had been standing here right in front of our window. I shudder at the thought that this thing could have been there for a while, watching us sleep before we even awoke to see it. For the next four to five months, we had weird sensations all around the house and property, feeling like we're either not alone or being watched. But to us, we never did see that thing again after that. My ex-husband, after that, always brought around his 44 with him. At that point, every time he came to pick up and drop off our daughter, never did have an experience like that again for the remainder of the time that I lived in that house. This was in May of 1985, and I moved out of that house shortly after, Thanksgiving of the same year. Lately, all of the animals in our neighborhood have started to act strangely. We can attribute these behaviors to none other than supernatural forces. At random times, all of our animals will begin to act strangely, barking, hissing, and acting crazy at the woods surrounding our houses. Our cats recently have gone missing, and so have our small dogs. While some of us believe that it's a pack of coyotes, or something on the loose, I know better. Whatever is there has taken an interest in our pets for reasons still unknown. If this is in fact paranormal, entering an aggressive, directly territorial combat response is illogical, as in nature. Defense-based aggression is rarely the first response. Based on the research, I believe that this is a being that is purposefully waiting for just the right moments to strike. They know, or it knows, how we behave, yet we do not know its behaviors. It's extremely patient, cunning, and intelligent. It's not a coyote, fox, or wolf. 
I've seen the wanderings of coyotes, and there appears to be a kind of intelligent guiding in their behavior. Based on emotional interference and drawing from memory, coyotes, even in packs, seem apprehensive when coming into certain territories of neighborhoods due to large populations. We live in areas with a lot of wildlife and birds anyway, so it's very natural to assume that coyote behavior is simple fear of human beings. These cats, though, that are being snatched away and small dogs aren't animals straying far away from populated areas in the neighborhood. They're being snatched up from the yards or back porch. Something is taking them, and nobody is sure what it is. From other experiences alone in the woods, we know it's not your typical animal in nature. This has to be the work of something else entirely. What? I'm not quite sure. Is it possible that this is a dogman or a Bigfoot? Absolutely, since they are usually the ones to be a little bit more aggressive when it's coming in for food and based on stories and other experiences. But at what scale do we really call this a dogman or Squatch? How many animals have to disappear? This has to be something else that we are not experiencing or understanding. What is creepy is that this is going on mostly at night, when everybody's asleep in the early morning hours. That's when these animals are disappearing and nobody is finding a single trace of them. My girlfriend, in fact, asked me one night if I saw movement out in the yard, but I didn't see what she was talking about. She shot up out of bed to look and said she could have sworn she saw a big shadow moving around quickly between yards, but I dismissed her outright. And you know, it's really got me thinking. Maybe there is truth to what she had to say. So far, nobody has found a trace of any animals. No blood trails, no clues, and never any bones. I do think we will find the remains at some point, but who knows? I honestly have no idea. I am a former police officer who worked as a deputy sheriff here in Central Florida. I had been working in law enforcement for around six years. I am not a novice or rookie by any means. On January 19th, 2007, I was working as a school resource officer at a middle school here in Orlando, Florida. I was sitting in my patrol car in a parking lot on the east side of the building when I noticed a man walking across the parking lot. I was in uniform and had my marked patrol car parked in a visitor parking spot in front of the school. I was busy writing my notebook and did not think much about the man at first. I thought he was a parent picking up a student. But the man did not come into the school like a parent should and did not look like one. I watched the man walk around the back of the building and then appear on the other side. He was walking very slowly, deliberately, and with his head tilted downwards toward the ground. He looked very strange. He was wearing a white shirt and white pants, and was also wearing a black jacket. Keep in mind it was like May or June, very hot in the Florida heat. The man stopped walking, looked straight up at me, and then walked slowly towards my car. I put my notebook down and realized immediately something was wrong. I could see his face clearly as he approached my car. His eyes were jet black, and all around his eyes were very dark. He had a very weird look on his face. He did not look right. It was almost as if he was doing this on purpose, maybe trying to scare me. He wasn't walking normal either. He was walking very deliberately, very slowly. When he got to my car, he walked around it then walked around the other side. He was now standing about five feet away from my car. He was a white male, about 6'1", very thin. He also looked very unnaturally skinny, like he was just skin and bones. But his arms and legs were too long. It didn't really make sense. His face was also strange too, the closer I looked. His nose was kind of unnaturally long and I would describe it as kind of similar to that of a beak or a hook. His face was also very slender and stretched. I reached for my taser because I felt imminent danger from him. This guy was bad news. I kept my gun in my holster 
I did not want the situation to escalate to the point where I would be forced to use deadly force. I reached across my body, grabbed my taser, and as I did, the man turned and slowly walked away. He began to walk away while staring at me. I got out of my car and followed him. We walked very slowly, about three feet every five seconds. I told him to stop, but he would not turn around. I walked up to him, grabbed him by the shoulder. He stopped and spun around and grabbed me by the neck and pulled me close to him. His hands and fingers were disgusting and he smelt like rotting meat. He had long black nails that dug into my throat. I reached for my gun. I pulled it out and pointed it at him, demanding he stop. I told him I was going to shoot him if he did not let me go. But instead, this excited him, it seemed. He grabbed hold of me even tighter, tried to pull me close. It was in that moment that he pulled back his lips, revealing a mouthful of black, rotten sharp teeth that resembles more of a shark than anything. I was in fear for my life, so I fired two shots into his chest. He stood there for a second, then collapsed to the ground. He did let go of my neck. I took a few steps back and he laid on the ground face down. He was not moving. I radioed dispatch and told them that I just shot a man. I told them that the man was attacking me and that he had dark rotten teeth, black eyes and he looked wrong. There was something very wrong about this guy. He did not look right or act right in any way. So, I could see the man was breathing slowly. He was not bleeding from the gunshot wounds like I had thought. As I watched him, I noticed that his back was very weird. He did not have any muscles, at least, that were visible. No tone at all. It was just skin. I could see almost every rib. I could see every vertebrae in his spine. The back of his jacket that he had on and shirt were almost ripped at the back. So, when he was on his face, his back was almost entirely exposed. It was very bizarre. His arms were unnaturally thin, like I said. I watched him breathe for about five minutes, but he wasn't really moving. I cautiously approached him with my taser drawn. I still did not want to get too close. I had told dispatch that I was going to check him for a pulse to try and get some paramedics when the shots were initially fired. So I knelt down beside him and felt his neck for a pulse. I could not find one. I found a very weak and rapid pulse by his wrist. I told dispatch I thought he was close to death. When paramedics had arrived, just a few minutes after the five minute mark, they radioed back and told me I had just shot a homeless man. I told them that he was not homeless. He did not appear homeless. He looked very strange. I gave the description of the man and they said they would send a crime scene unit to the location. The paramedics even checked the man for a pulse, but they couldn't find one. I told them to try again and they did. They found a very faint pulse. The paramedics said the man would probably die from the gunshot wounds, although they were concerned why there was never any blood, just this thick black ooze pouring out of the wound. The paramedics also said they had never seen anything like this before. The man looked like an unnatural skeleton, and I know he was not dead yet, but they needed to hurry. They said they were doing everything they could, so they called for a helicopter to transport the man to the hospital. The helicopter landed in the parking lot. The paramedics put the man on a stretcher, loaded him into the chopper, and they took off, headed for the hospital. I went inside the school and asked one of the office workers to tape off the area. I then went to my car and called my supervisor to tell him what had happened. I told him that the man had attacked me and that I had shot him. He said he would meet me at the hospital where the man was being transported. The crime scene unit arrived and I took them to the scene. They took pictures and I gave them a full statement. I then went to the hospital and met with my supervisor. He asked if I was alright. I told him I was fine. He asked me what had happened. I frankly told him I don't know. Whatever I encountered was not normal. Out of all the years I've seen drug addicts and psychos and domestic violence, this man was wrong. Everything about him. A dark face, his teeth, his eyes. 
This was not a normal person. I almost even doubt he was human. I know that sounds far-fetched, but when you deal with it face to face, there was something so off. So we went to go see the man and the paramedics were treating him. They were giving him fluids and were doing everything they could, but he was acting psychotic, groaning and screaming, but not in pain. He was also bleeding badly, if you could call it that, except there was no blood. It was just this thick black ooze running all down his body. I have never seen anything like it. His smell was even worse than before. The entire room smelled just like rotting meat. He began convulsing violently and began screaming and speaking in a language none of us have ever heard before, with a different voice. And then, shortly thereafter, he had passed. To be honest with you, I'm not really sure what he was, because I can tell you from dealing firsthand, I'm confident that this was in no way human. I saw a dogman in the summer of 2009. I was out at my family's cabin in northern Michigan, near the towns of Vanderbilt and Mackinac. It had been a hot day and we decided to camp out on the property. We had a fire going and we were sitting around the fire. My two brothers and I were out grilling, hanging out. It was very dark and there was no moon that night. I happened to look up at the sky and saw a large dark figure moving quickly across the sky. It was moving so fast that it looked like a blur. It was heading in a south-southwest direction, and I noticed that it was not a bird. It had no wings. It was not a plane because it was not moving like one either. It was simply a huge black figure that was gliding across the sky, very large. It was also very low in the sky, no higher than a few hundred feet up. It was moving very fast. I had never seen anything like that before. So, in fear of what I was seeing, I ran inside, woke my two brothers, and we all went outside to see if we could spot that creature or animal again. As we're standing outside for a few moments, we notice a strange noise coming from around my brother's tent that he had set up for the dogs. It was a strange kind of growling noise, a mixture between a dog and a wolf. It sounded like a dog, but with a deeper growl. So I ran over to the tent, unzipping the door, and I saw my brother's two dogs, an Australian Shepherd and a German Shepherd inside. They were both nervous, uneasy, and growling. I could hear something moving around near the tent, and it sounded like a large animal. Now I was scared, more so because of how the dogs were acting. They could sense something was wrong. I managed to get the dogs out of the tent. My brothers decided to go with me, and we all stood there in the dark. That's when we heard a very loud noise coming from near the woodpile. It sounded like a growl mixed with a roar, and sounded like it was coming from a very large animal. We turned on some flashlights and saw the creature standing behind the woodpile. We saw it very clearly. It was a huge, hairy creature that kind of looked like a werewolf. I was terrified. The creature was no more than 70 feet away from us. It had long black stringy hair and hair all over its face. It appeared very muscular and lean and tall. It was kind of a mixture between a dog and a man. Long pointed ears and what appeared to be a skinny tail. I could not see its eyes very well. This creature that was growling at us we all stood there for about two minutes, and then it turned around, slowly, and walked off into the woods. It moved quickly, but it also kind of hunched over. I never saw it again. I'm not a hunter, and I have never killed anything. I am, in fact, very anti-hunting, but I have never put it past myself to actually buy and own a gun, because maybe now's a good time to start doing that. In the summer of 2007, I was working at Camp Lost Isle, a small island off the coast of northern Michigan. My job was to run the kids program, which involved taking kids out on the wilderness adventures for days, or leading them in arts and crafts. That summer, 
I had a couple of kids come to me and talk about seeing a monster. You see, this was not uncommon. At that camp, the woods were very mysterious and scary. So, it was not surprising that kids had seen ghosts or monsters and other strange things. Myself, I was always skeptical about these stories for the same reason adults tell children not to talk to strangers, because adults don't believe in ghosts and monsters. But, you see, these kids were insistent. They told me they had seen a monster with yellow eyes and a face with a long snout, kind of like a coyote. I didn't believe them at first, but then I began to notice other kids talking about this same monster. Soon, that monster was all anybody would be talking about. One kid said he had seen it during an adventure in the woods, and another said he had seen it from her cabin window. It was at that moment that I began to believe there might be some truth to this thing. Maybe it was just a simple misidentification, but something was going on. I just didn't know what or how real, until one night, as I was lying in my bunk, I heard something stepping on the roof of the cabin adjacent. It was very loud, and it sounded like a person stomping on a tin roof. I jumped up out of my bed, shined a flashlight around, but the noises had ceased and I could see nothing. So, after a couple of moments, I went back inside. Now, the following night, I heard the same thing. Ran outside, looked around, didn't see anything. After that, it started to affect my sleep. I was scared to go to bed. I eventually confronted one of the camp counselors about this monster. I asked her if she had seen it and told her my experiences. I explained that kids had been talking about it and maybe, just maybe, it was their way of dealing with the fear of being away from home. So, I decided at that moment, I would have to investigate this on my own. So, on one of the evenings, I followed the same path that the kids had been taking when they went to the bathroom at night. This trail led through the woods and eventually to the top of a small hill. I waited until it was late at night and then walked out there myself. There was not much but forest and it was pretty dark. So I climbed down to the other side of the small hill and walked through the woods. I was not really sure where I was going but I just kept walking. Eventually, I found myself standing at the edge of a forest. I had no idea where it was, but I felt like I was being pulled into the woods. I took a step forward. Then I heard something. I turned around quickly, and there in the darkness was a face with yellow eyes and a long snout. I knew right then that it was this monster. It was as if I could feel its energy. I knew and it knew that it had seen me. I stood there frozen, and I heard something. It sounded kind of like a voice, but it was nothing like I had ever heard before. It was kind of like a combination of a roar and a whisper, and it was right behind me. I turned around and saw this thing. Next, it was standing next to me, and it was staring straight at me. I don't remember what had happened next. I think I must have blacked out because I woke up, and it was morning, and I was lying in the woods. I knew it was still early, so everybody would still be asleep. I walked back to camp, and I told nobody about what had happened, and I could not sleep that night. That night, though, the noises on the roof adjacent to my cabin were very loud. I didn't dare get out and look. I was so busy thinking about this monster. The next day after that felt even more different. It's hard to explain, and even after days and months the incident had occurred, I never did feel quite the same. Like something inside of me changed. The kids still kept talking about seeing this thing, and a couple of weeks, everyone began referring to it as a Wendigo. So, I'll leave it up to you to decide. Was this just some massive nightmare plaguing our camp? Or did I and everybody else encounter a real-life Wendigo? I lived in Point Pleasant at the time of the Mothman. I was 12 years old and remember it very vividly. 
I was sleeping over at a babysitter's house that was only about a block away from my home. For some reason, I woke up right at 3 a.m. I was lying in bed with my eyes closed and I was thinking about the Mothman, wondering if he's going to come back. Then, I felt something in my spirit, my body, tell me that everything went wrong. I opened my eyes and, standing outside my window, I couldn't see anything but this black, dark shape, and I knew it was him. I was standing completely still, and so was it. This thing was staring at me. He was big and black and had red eyes. I was paralyzed with fear and could not move. About 30 seconds later, he just sort of melted back into the darkness out the window. I know it wasn't a nightmare. I was wide awake. Well, a few years go by and I heard that the babysitter had been seeing this thing too, but she didn't tell anybody because she was too afraid that somebody would think she was crazy and she would lose her babysitting gig. That's why I'm sure it was real. I live in the country on a dead-end road. I've lived here for 20 years and I've seen many strange things. In fact, when we first moved in, I would see this big black dog with red eyes. It frightened me, but I would go out at night to try and see it. It appeared for years. One day, we were in the middle of a cornfield. The corn was about 10 feet high at the time. That might be an exaggeration, but it was pretty tall. We were walking in the middle of the field, and I just got a very bad feeling that somebody was watching me. I looked up and saw this pale man in a black suit with a hat standing in the corn a ways away. Now, I've had several strange encounters with things I can't exactly explain. I've also seen a large black dog with red eyes. I used to call him Bad Dog. I also see a strange figure with red eyes too. It is about the size of, I don't know, maybe me, but a little bit taller and broader. It shows up at night and watches me sometimes. These are just many strange things that happen around here. Safe to say, I don't really like to go out at night anymore. I feel like I'm watched constantly. I was living in Arizona at the time, and one afternoon, I was driving into Sedona on a dirt road. It was a very warm day, and I was driving with the windows down. I was a little lost, but I was sure I was going in the right direction. All of a sudden, I see this huge creature walking in the middle of the road. At first, I didn't know what it was. All I saw was a big mass of purple. It was kind of like the color of a lavender plant or a lilac and it looked like it was maybe wearing a robe, but I couldn't be sure. It was the size of maybe three or four men standing on top of each other, freakishly tall. I stopped dead still and stared at it, not sure what I was looking at. It looked at me too, and I could tell it was looking at me. I saw two large eyes on the sides of its head, and they were huge black eyes. Then, it began walking towards my vehicle. I had no idea what to do, and it was so huge it was moving quickly. I was concerned that it could have killed me. So, I began to drive away as fast as I could. I did not look back, and I didn't stop until I got to town. I don't know if I had just seen an alien or what on earth I spotted, but it certainly was a freak of nature. I tried telling my friends about it, but they didn't believe me. They thought I was making an app, or I was drunk, which I was not. I have never told anybody about it until now. I haven't seen it since, and for some reason, I had to write about it. I still have the memory of it in my head. I can remember it to this day. I will never forget what I saw. It was easily one of the most frightening things I've ever seen, and strangest. I never saw what it was, but I heard more than enough for me to ever want to see what it looked like. I was going through this phase in my life where I was solo camping a lot, and this was a good way for me to deal with problems that I was going through. 
I felt like solo camping was kind of my escape. I'm usually a pretty big camper, but always end up camping with other people, like friends and family. I enjoyed the company, but I really enjoyed being alone and the solace that comes with it for just a couple of days. It allowed me to think and to clear my mind. This night, I was up in the foothills. I don't know what animal this was and I can't claim it was one thing or another. But here's what I can tell you about what had happened. I had just finished setting up camp for the night and was sitting, listening to the crickets and bullfrogs. Then, I heard something in the woods that sounded like a woman screaming. I didn't think much of it, until I heard it again. This time, it was much louder. Then it screamed again, and this time, sounding like it was right next to me. I started to freak out a little bit, grabbed my flashlight. My hands began shaking. I stood up, and I heard something moving quickly in the woods. It was big. I could hear branches and leaves breaking, leaves being crushed underfoot. I was so scared that I could not move. I just stood there in my tent, shaking like a leaf. It got closer and closer, and I thought it was going to come into my tent. Then, I heard it moving up the hill away from me. It was moving incredibly fast, and it was making these loud snapping, cracking, popping noises. I could hear it moving further and further away from me, until it finally stopped. I stayed up like all night, and I'm still freaked out by it. The next night that I went up to the top of the hill, I tried to find any sign of this creature. I didn't see or hear anything. I didn't find any tracks, nothing. But I found a bunch of broken limbs. It was like it came down the hill just to scare me, but then went back to wherever it came from. I don't know what it was or what it wanted, but I know I don't ever want to see it again. I hope that this story has scared you enough to keep you from going deep into the woods. I was on a long drive back from Texas through Nevada to my home in Southern California. The time was around 9 p.m. I was driving in a desert region of the state. I mean, well... All the state is desert, but this area is pretty lonesome. I was all alone on this long road. It was a simple two-lane highway with no business nearby. You're kind of just out in the middle of nowhere. There were no street lights or anything. It was not completely pitch black, because there was some light from the moon and stars. And as a person who lives in an urban area, I get a bit frightened driving in these kind of dark situations. So... I was driving cautiously. I had my car windows rolled down, and I was listening to the radio at a low volume. Then, I see the shape of something large flying directly towards my car. It flew directly in front of my car. I slam on my brakes. It was so fast. I could not make sense of what I was seeing. I saw it fly right in front of my car, so I instantly stopped. I was still trying to figure out what I saw and... I was looking around. I did not know what to do. I sat there in the car with the engine going, completely stunned, and I was not sure if this was a bird or a bat or maybe a person or something. I just knew it was something large and flying. Then, I hear this horrible screeching coming all from outside. I couldn't make out the direction, but I could hear something making the noise. Then, I began driving slowly, and I see this shape coming back towards the vehicle again. Now, I'm scared out of my mind, because it came rushing at my car and then swooped up in the air really fast. This thing looked like some large bat creature, but I couldn't really tell. I was too scared to look at it. It was flying right over me, and this time, I could hear the fluttering noise. I saw some shape, and this thing was flying in some erratic flight patterns. Then, it swooped down right on the road in front of my car, forcing me to stop. That's when my headlights illuminated this thing fully, and I saw every horrifying detail for the first time. It was a creature with a very large body, maybe the size of a man. It was covered in hair with an almost owl-like appearance. It had large wings, it was black in color, and had a very large head. It was not the head of a human, though. 
The head was more round and dome-shaped, like an owl's, and it had really large black eyes, and a mouth with teeth. I could even kind of see a tongue sticking out. The mouth was open, exposing teeth, and it appeared to be breathing very heavily. It was also accompanied by a terrible odor, kind of like rotting meat that had been left in a hot dumpster for days. This thing was visibly standing on two legs with its wings folded up. They kind of looked like ratty, torn up bat wings. Instantly, in my mind, I just knew this was some sort of demon. So I floored my car and swerved around it, barely missing it, getting up to 90. I could not believe this thing was real. I was so scared. I started going faster and faster, and I managed to get away. I drove for miles and miles, and for a couple of hours after, my adrenaline finally began to wear off. Now, I was feeling exhausted, and I think I just pulled over to a random pullout and tried to sleep. Even though I was very hesitant to do so, in case this thing came back, I probably didn't fall asleep till closer to maybe two or three in the morning, just because of how scared I was. I'm lucky that I never saw this thing again after that, and was not awakened in my car by this thing. I know what I saw. I know this was not a man in a costume. I know this was not a bird or any animal. This was a demon. I know that demons and evil exist, and this was no doubt a demon. I was lucky to escape. I believe this demon was doing something in the desert, and it targeted me. I believe this thing was maybe looking for something, or I just happened to drive in the wrong place at the wrong time. If these creatures are real, and they are capable of doing anything they want, who knows what it was wanting from me, or trying to do? Then, I always ask myself, why didn't it pursue me more? It could have if it wanted to. It clearly wanted my attention for something. Could it have possibly been there to warn me? I was born in a small town in western Kansas, and while there, I had a close encounter with a creature I call a skinwalker. I've been trying to study the whole skinwalker phenomenon for about 20 years now. I have come to the conclusion that a skinwalker is a shapeshifter from another dimension, and they can take the form of anything it wants. The incident I'm about to tell you about happened back in the summer of 1973. The strange creature I saw was about seven feet tall, hairless, and had red glowing eyes. It was standing on the roof of my house. It had long arms and a long, thin neck, and a face that was long and pointed. It looked kind of like an ape, or something. It kind of had a bit of a shuffle to it. It was strange, and it was clearly not human. The one night, I was in my bed asleep, and I woke up to what sounded like a helicopter landing on the roof. I went to look out the window and I looked out, and I see this huge, distorted figure standing on the rooftop. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. So I got my dad and he took a look out the window, and of course, he didn't see anything. I told him it was still there. Then we both ran outside. When we got outside, the creature had disappeared. It was gone. It was too fast for us to catch. The next day, I told all my friends about it. They just thought I was making it up. This creature left a smell that was very strange, and there was a strong smell of sulfur, like you would smell in a chemical factory. I also smelled a strong manure smell. It was very unpleasant. It was the smell of death. I don't know what this creature was, but it was not human. It was a demon. I've been trying to figure it out for 20 years, and the next night... My father and I are getting out of our truck and my dad gasps because he sees this being on our roof again. Points, and I see it now too. The same creature was there. It looked to be about maybe seven feet tall and had red glowing eyes. This thing jumps into the air and off behind the house. We both go into the house and slam the door. There would be times at night afterwards where we could hear this thing walking around the back side of the house as if waiting for the right opportunity to do something. I tell you this story because you can believe it or not. I know what I saw. 
I am a former police city officer in Kansas. I know what I saw. I don't care what anybody says. I was born and raised in Kansas, and I tell you this with 100% certainty. I know what it was. At least, I'm confident I am. And I'm also confident that this wasn't a human in any way, shape, or form. This thing was ultimately terrifying. This was back in the summer of 2013, when I had my first experience with the unknown. Let me just put this in there and say, I can confidently say to this day, I'm not exactly sure what this thing was. I'll do my best to describe it to you, and maybe you can figure out what it is that I saw. I've never seen any animal like it, and never knew it existed. I also lived around a huge swamp plot of land, hundreds of acres of undeveloped marsh and swamp. I was walking home from school one day, when I noticed something large in the trees moving close by. I thought it was maybe just a big dog at first, but as it began moving around, it turned out to be this giant lizard with a very long tail. This thing also was completely upright, like a grown man would, taller than I. I never in my life could imagine, or begin to imagine, seeing a fully two-legged lizard. I knew I was in shock when I saw it, I had no idea what this was. It was like a partial man, partial lizard hybrid. I was able to see its clawed feet and hands, as well as the lizard-like head and body. This thing was brownish in color, and had the most human-like eyes I've ever seen on a reptile. It did not have any hair on it at all. I believe it was looking for food, by the way. It was kind of walking and sniffing the air. I was able to see it for a few seconds, before it realized I was looking at it, and then it ran off into the trees. I didn't know what to do or think. It was like I was in a trance. I was so shocked. I couldn't even move to call it for help. I just stood there in shock and disbelief, and I thought, did I just see that? In fact, for the next few days, I kept thinking about it over and over, just trying to rationalize and compartmentalize what I saw. I just kept telling myself it was the trick of the eye and maybe my mind was playing tricks on me. I thought I was going crazy. I kept trying to just rationalize it over and over. But I knew I saw something. But I was so confused as to what it was. So I told a few of my friends about this thing that I saw and they had no idea what it was either. I just didn't know what to do with myself. And about a full week later, I saw it again. The area where I saw it the very first time is very thick brush, trees, and swamp. Around this time, it was early June, just before school got out, so everything was very thick and lush. It would be really hard to get back there, let alone in a giant lizard suit. So that's why I never thought it to be somebody in a suit playing a prank. The second time that I saw it, it was moving slowly back towards the swamp in an area that's a little bit more cleared out still littered with swamps and trees, just more open so you can see further back, and I caught movement out of my eye. I turn to look, and for a second, I see the same creature darting through the trees way back in there. It honestly made me shudder. I could feel my heart pounding in my chest. I was a little more prepared this time because I saw it before it saw me. This time, I was able to get a better look at it, I was able to see its body and hands more clearly from this angle too, mainly just because of how large they were. It was very muscular, like a bodybuilder. It was standing in a wide-legged stance and watching me. I couldn't see its facial features very well because it was still far away, but I could see the shape of its head and eyes. I also saw its tail. It was much longer than before, and again it was brownish in color with splotches of green. This was no doubt a living, breathing creature. So, I started to think about it more and more. And I thought, is this a mutant or something? But I didn't know of any radiation in the area. Look, I know that's probably a stretch to assume such a thing from what I saw, and, but I have no idea how to explain it away. Is it possible that giant human lizards live down here in the swamps of eastern Texas?
I was 19 years old, studying in a college in a remote village in the Amazonian region of Peru. I was the only foreigner in my class. One day, I was walking down a trail in the jungle when I noticed a strange growth on the trunk of a tree. It was like an elongated wart and was about the size of a human hand. I looked at it more closely and it began to move. There was a small hole in the wart-like growth and a brownish, moist, worm-like creature emerged and looked up at me. It was longer than six inches, with a tapered head and a very wrinkled, ugly body. It kind of resembled a worm, but moved like a snake. It had large black lilith eyes, and it was covered in these kind of gray-brown scales. It was very smooth and silky and shiny. I was shocked, and I stood there, staring at it. I called my Peruvian friend over, and he was just as shocked as I was. We stood there for a while, staring at it. Then, after watching it, it kind of just slithered into a hole in the tree and disappeared. I was so fascinated that I forgot to take a photo. The next day, I went back to the same spot, but this creature was not there. Maybe I was hallucinating. But my Peruvian friend confirmed what I saw. I'm not sure what this creature was, but... It was unlike anything I had ever seen. It was nothing like the drawings of a snake or a worm, or anything that lives in this jungle. It was something alien and unknown. I thought I was going crazy, so I hardly have ever told anybody about this. I didn't even mention it to my other Peruvian friends. It was too strange. So I just put the experience in the back burner of my mind. I have not been back to the area since afterwards I left. I don't know what happened to that thing, or maybe there are more of them. Maybe it's an undiscovered species. I'm not sure. I wonder, though, how many people will ever even believe my story. I was sitting on the sofa in my living room with my wife and daughter. My dog was off to the side, lying down. I was petting my dog when something caught my eye. It was a shadow on the wall. The shadow was very tall, taller than my 6'4 height. I looked at the shadow and noticed that it looked like a person. Maybe it was just my wife in the kitchen, but when I looked at her, she was on the other side of the room. The shadow kind of moved across the living room, and I turned to look and could see it was somebody outside, a tall bipedal creature. It had long arms and legs and a shorter torso. It had kind of a more elongated neck with a small head. The body had an almost plump appearance, and it was covered in dark hair. The head was also covered in long hair. It was very strange looking. My entire family was gasping at what we were seeing. This was like a man in some sort of suit, but obviously not a man in a suit. It appeared as if whatever this thing was was moving from one patch of woods to the next, and was acting stealthy. It was moving very slowly, as if it was being very cautious. No matter where it stepped, it was always in view. I was afraid to look away for fear of it being gone. We watched it move from back to the front of the house, and then went into the other patch of woods, and we lost sight of it. It was maybe seven feet tall. The area around here is swampy, so I assume that's where it's been living. It walked on two legs, by the way. The creature appeared to be very wary of anything around it, I believe it was checking out the house to see if there were maybe anyone around it, to hopefully not be seen. It did not seem aggressive and it was very quiet, but I do not think that it was sneaking up on us. It was easily the strangest thing we have all ever seen. I am not sure of the time of this incident though, I would guess maybe 10.30 at night. So did we see a Bigfoot, or was this something else? Okay, this is easily the scariest thing I've ever seen in my life. I'm serious, and I will never forget it. I was walking home from a family dinner at about 9.30 p.m., a little bit tipsy. I was walking along a gravel path near a creek when I see this strange thing emerge from the water. I froze. It was a creature that appeared to be a cross between a reptile and a seal. It was about three feet long and about two feet high. It had scales, but 
kind of had flippers. Its head was shaped kind of like a seal's, but it had a long snout, like that of a caiman, and beady little yellow eyes. I was horrified. Its mouth was full of sharp teeth, and its jaws were wide open, and it came right at me. I almost fainted, I was so startled and scared. It hissed, and it sounded very threatening. I turned and ran, but it was chasing after me very quickly. It was faster than I thought it would be. I couldn't believe what this thing was. It chased me for a couple of minutes before I lost it. It tried to get me, but I was too fast for it. It kind of moved like a lizard does, but it was built more like a reptile than a seal. I don't really know what to say about it, and I don't think I'll ever forget about what I saw. It's too crazy. I don't know what it is or why it exists, and I have no idea how I was ever able to sleep afterwards. I know my account might seem ridiculous and far-fetched, but believe me, I've never imagined anything looking like a failed science experiment to come out of the water and try to strike me. It's easily the most disturbing thing I've seen. A couple of years back, my husband was driving me home from work, and I was sitting in the passenger seat of his car. We were stuck in traffic. It was around dusk and getting dark. We were on a rural road, and it was a very clear night. We stopped at a red light, when I noticed something. As I was staring straight ahead, I noticed something off to my right, in the woods to the side of the road. It was standing there, looking at me. To start with, it was very dark in color, and very dark in the woods. There wasn't much light, but I was able to see this. Because there was an automatic flagger and road work up ahead, the several cars of traffic in front of us, I'm sure, saw it too. The figure was covered in hair and very tall like a man. It had a very elongated face with large black eyes. It was staring right back at me. It kind of just slowly crept back into the woods from where it came. I'm sure others saw it too. They had to have. I mean, it was right there. My husband and I were terrified, but we were stuck. There was nowhere we could have moved or gone. After it disappeared, I'm telling my husband this thing might come back, and we kept talking, trying to figure out what it was. The flagger turned green, and we all drove off and did not end up seeing that thing a second time. I know what I saw, and I believe it. It was some sort of large beast that had human-like features and covered in hair. I'm not sure what it was. I don't believe in Bigfoot, and I don't think it was a Bigfoot, even if I did believe. While the body looked like a human's with thick hair, kind of like a bear's, the face was animalistic. I don't think it was a bear either. I didn't see any claws or teeth, but it just had to have been some sort of wild beast. Some kind of unexplained animal. Was this thing trying to communicate? I don't know. I'm just glad it didn't attack me or my husband. I mean, it was scary. I'm not sure if this was some kind of swamp creature or what. I just know what I saw, and it was very, very terrifying. Hey there. I'm recent to this channel, and normally, you expect stories about wendigos or skinwalkers or other cryptid sightings. This story took place around two years ago, when I came back from a trip from Japan, and the most horrifying experience occurred to me during it. Now, this is not the first time I've attempted to share this story with a YouTuber. In fact, this is my ninth attempt. Three said it was a lie, one said that it was too sketchy, and others did not share the story. This experience will be one I will never forget in my life. Now, what I'm about to tell you may sound overkill, but believe me, the more detailing, even if it dark, unnecessary, or even straight up doubtful, is better than just saying that this happened and you lived. My name is Jessica, but you can call me Jess. I will, however, leave the exact place in Japan and state location anonymous due to reasons I shouldn't really have to say. 
but enough fooling around with logic and all that to begin my story. It all happened about two years ago. Well, the actual event occurred on the 29th of December. But now that I think about it, there have been weird things happening even before then. I was taking a vacation with my family, having a younger sister, along with a common mother and father, as well as bringing my two friends. Now, we arrived at Japan on the 24th of December, and I'm not going to bore y'all with the usual trying to get a rental car and driving it several hours to your destination talk. So, when we eventually got to our destination, a small village far from society, it was now nearing dusk. We were welcomed into the village by a woman who wore white robes and bright red symbols sewn in. The village was beautiful. Children played around the bamboo gardens. Elders spoke of old times and memories, and other casually smiled at us or glanced at us as they worked. I caught eye of an elder who stood out from everybody else. Instead of smiling or showing any hospitality, he displayed a look of what looked like disliking toward us, especially me, because he didn't show this towards anybody else. We were guided to our house. The doors open, and we gasp at its awe and beauty. Of course, my little sis was the first to enter with the speed like that of a cheetah, yelling in joy and curiosity. The house was almost like a mansion, having two floors, and I chose one of the bedrooms on the second floor, the one facing towards the forest. Oh yeah, there was an expansive forest just south of the village, and when I looked out the window, I was taken aback at what I saw. Instead of lush green pastures or a beautiful river, I saw the opposite. It was dead. No birds sang there. No animals nor insects moved around. The grass was tan and brown and the trees were different. The trees were dead, yet they produced black leaves. Before I could see more, it was dark, and my parents had to drag me, metaphorically, outside of the courtyard. Once again, I was bewildered at what was going on. The villagers were having a bonfire, dancing and singing and laughing. We went over and joined in the fun. My little sister did not speak Japanese, so I had to accompany her when somebody wanted to talk to her, or if she wanted to talk to somebody which really was a bummer. But then I saw him, the old man from earlier, and he was just staring at me. I wanted to ask him why, but I had to accompany my sister. She tugged at my pants and asked me a question I can't quite remember. When I looked back to where the elder was, he was now gone. The party went on for about three hours, and when it was over, we headed back to the house. While everybody was in their rooms asleep, I was looking out that window, pondering over the same question over and over again. Why is it like that? Then, sleep finally found me. I woke up the next day to find the daylight shining through the window. So, the usual stuff happened, like breakfast and other things. Nothing strange occurred for the next two days. The third day, however, was different. I saw the same old man at the very edge of the dead grass, just staring at the woods. I then decided to go down and talk to him. When I got there, I asked why he was there. He did not move or respond. Then I remembered this village only spoke Japanese. I necked myself for the stupidity of my mistake, so I asked in the only language he knew. He still didn't understand or respond, at least. I then asked why everything was dead, and that's when he talked. It wasn't always like this, he told me. It was once a wonderful place, filled with the sights and sounds of animals, until the day it showed up. I was confused. It? The old man coldly responded. Yes, it. She is the reason why everything here is dead. I was confused even more staring into the forest, but the chance to get more information was cut short 
when I turned back to him, only to find he was gone, like he had vanished into thin air. I went back to the village and started to ask why the forest was dead, but to my shock, the ones I asked the question to ran away from me or tried looking away. The day went normally from there. That was until it turned into a disaster at dusk. We were having a bonfire with the villagers when all of a sudden, one of the women came screaming. She came into the light of the fire and the screams of other women joined hers. Her robes were painted red with blood and slashes were nearly everywhere. The men instantly brought her to the medical house. I had to cover my sister's eyes. But the weirdest thing was that she kept screaming, Ima washiki! Ima washiki! I saw the elderly man, but this time, his face was filled with fear and terror. The next day, the woman had died from her injuries that she had sustained. And from whatever inflicted them to her, I still don't know. It's kind of a mystery. Apparently, there were also two other women with her during the previous night. Yet, both failed to return. Panic quickly spread amongst the villagers, and us as well. But I was confused what the woman meant by Ima Washiki. I looked it up on Google Translate, only to be even more perplexed. The Japanese word Ima Washiki meant abomination in English. Something was terribly wrong here, and I knew that old man had the answers. Since everyone respected and feared him, he was the oldest, roughly 120. I found him and asked him what this abomination was. For the first time since I arrived, he looked at me, not with that of disgust, but with fear. He guided me to his home. It was somewhat creepy, both in and out of the home. He sat me down at a table, locked the windows, the doors, and blocked out the windows before lighting several candles. I admit, I was concerned, but he told me that I needed to know something about the village. So I eased up. He began like he was telling a legend. The village has long lived in peace and harmony. That was until the abomination appeared. So I asked him, what is this abomination? Surprisingly, he answered my question. It is a beast from the depths of the endless darkness of the abyss. One that craves nothing more than death. It is blood in color, the skin like that of stone, but as strong as metal. It bears two demonic wings and a tail that stretches long. It sprouts two curved horns on its head with long ink hair. It is as tall as a bear that rears on its hind legs. Its eyes like that of fire. And its maw wide and terrible. Its fangs are that of daggers. I could picture it in my mind, shivering at the thought. Why is the force dead? I had asked. He just continued, and it did come. It came and preyed on innocents who dared to enter the Deadlands. I saw it myself several times. It has never ventured past those trees, as if some phantom wall prevented it from leaving. I was baffled at this startling revelation. He then got up, took off the sheets from the windows, letting the warm sunlight touch the room. He allowed me to leave. That night, I did not join the bonfire, but instead to the Deadlands, as the old man called it, looking to see if the creature would ever show. Hours passed, my eyes slowly began to shut when I suddenly caught a glimpse of something out there. I strained my eyes and saw two small glowing yellow dots. At first, I thought they were fireflies, but then I noticed that these dots moved in unison and rarely blinked. When they did, it was in unison. I grabbed some binoculars and nearly jammed them into my own eyes. Even though these dots were far away, I could make out something startling. And these were not fireflies. They were eyes. I could barely make out the black slits cutting down the centers of them. All of a sudden, they turned right at me, as if whatever those eyes belonged to saw me. 
I ducked, waited for a minute or two, before peeking out again. They were gone. I had a strange dream during that night. I was in the woods and I found a little girl with two pairs of red wings and a long red tail, along with short, straight, bright red horns. She was wearing dark gray robes, and she had her back turned. As I approached her, her tail stretched and lashed out towards me, ensnaring me in a coil. As the tail began to tighten, the forest vanished, and everything was black. Suddenly, a massive creature appeared in front of the girl with two pairs of wings and a long tail. Its horns were curved and its eyes glowed yellow. As I started to fade, the girl said without turning around, those who enter the forest. She turned around with glowing magenta eyes. Few return. The thing in front of the girl then lunged at me, its mouth unhinged like a snake with teeth like that of daggers. And that's when I woke up. The next day, I decided to go into the Deadlands. As soon as I entered the forest, I felt like I should not be there. Like, as if I was trespassing on some predator's territory. It was around ten minutes since I entered, and I froze. I was lost. Then, I saw movement. It was fast, and too fast to keep track. I ran deeper into the woods when it suddenly got dark. The trees were so dense that sunlight barely even got through the tops. That's when I saw them. The eyes. The same glowing eyes from the night before. The same eyes that dream. And then the owner of these eyes walked into a dim patch of sunlight. I froze with terror as standing before me was the creature. The exact creature the elder told me about. It was dark red with cracked skin. Its sternum grossly protruded out and it had clawed fingers and toes and a height roughly around eight, maybe nine feet tall. Two massive pairs of wings stuck out on its back. A long tail with an arrowhead tip waved in the air like it had a mind of its own. It had long black hair with two curved dark red horns. Then... I saw its mouth. It was grotesque in the form of some twisted smile stretching to the sides of its head. Its teeth were like daggers. This is the beast that appeared in my dream the night before. I recollected myself and booked it. My instinct told me to not look back. But I did anyway. I have come to regret that decision. As soon as I turned... It was right there chasing me. It surprised me so much that I fumbled and fell to the ground. Then, a horrible stinging pain rips across my back, and I walked in pain and got up. The next thing I know that happens is being slammed like a motorcycle being slammed by a car going 80 miles per hour in full force. That blow knocked the breath out of me and sent me flying. The left side of my chest felt like it was on fire. I got up and ran. Once again, I was slammed, but this time in my right leg, and I felt that sharp searing pain on my leg, just like my back. I kept going and brushed my hand on my leg. My face must have turned white as I felt several large gouges in my leg and warm fluid gushing out. I wasn't thinking clearly at this time. Who wouldn't be? So, I thought the fluid was just me wetting my pants. I saw the daylight and jumped through out of the woods. I was on the ground when the creature stopped at the tree line. It let out this ear-piercing scream that sounded more like a demonic shriek and turned back to the woods. I limped my way back to the village, where all I remember seeing before going unconscious was falling and seeing a figure appear out of nothing right next to me from the direction of the woods with glowing magenta-like eyes. When I awakened, I was in the hospital. My sister, parents, friends, they were all near me. Apparently, someone saw a very young girl wearing dark gray robes brought me to the entrance of the village, literally having to drag me. But 
before said person could talk to her, she vanished. I had seven broken ribs. My arm was broken, and the gouges on my back and right leg needed stitches. But the strangest injury was on my right knee. Something or someone carved a symbol into it. More like ironed it, like a cow being branded. Even after two years, that thing is still on my knee. For some reason, I was released from the hospital only days later. We had to go back to the village to collect our things. When we drove off, I looked at the forest, and I swear I saw a girl wearing dark gray robes. She had two short and straight bright red horns, two pairs of red wings and a long red tail, and I caught her eyes. They were that same glowing magenta color, and she was smiling. I rubbed my eyes and she was gone, just like that. One thing that I forgot to mention, that the Elder did warn me, that if a person survives an attack by it, then it will find the survivor. Not to kill, but to be a reminder. Note that the date I saw this thing for the second time was April 11th, 2021. The day I typed this story was on May 20th, 2021. Now, I still have that symbol on my knee, like it was iron there. Now, what I'm about to tell you is very disturbing and creepy. I still have PTSD from this incident. And without any further ado, let's dive into this nightmare-inducing story. My name, if you don't already know, is Jessica, and I'm 19 years old. I live in a house with my mother, father, younger sister, three cats, and one dog. I'm the tough nut, as my dad calls it, of the family. This being physical and mental, I work out at a local gym at least five times a week being on a school week, and at least ten on entire week breaks from school. I'm around six feet tall and weighing over a whopping 200 pounds. The reason why I'm not at college is because, well, let's just say that I wasn't the smartest person in my house. At my school, I'm really a gentle giant, and being labeled as the ABW or anti-bully weapon, for good reason. If you were to ever look at my school records, you'll see that I've gotten into several fights, all of which ended up with black eyes, dozens of cuts and bruises, a broken nose, some broken fingers, or, yes, even a broken arm. These injuries do not belong to me. And no, I did not start any of these fights. They all begin with bullies, because bullies never understand what it means to pick on somebody their own size or treat others how you want to be treated. Or my saying, don't screw with the girl that has a six-pack. Well, even still, I would defend those who are being treated like crap because of bullies, no matter the size. Anyway, enough with talking about who I am. I'm back to talking about what you came here for. I was playing on my Xbox when something on the other side of the door to my room pounded on it. I literally jumped, thinking it was the FBI or the police. It was that loud. That's when my dad swung the door open. Jess, get your things together if you want to make it to the shooting range on Rice Farm. I jumped and quickly slammed things in my suitcase, quickly changed, and then shut down my Xbox, bursting out the front door. Now, I've never actually been to the Rice Farm until this day, and the Rice Farm was off-grid. A strange thing for a rice farm, but I thought nothing of it. It took us at least three, maybe four hours to get there. And to my surprise, my mother's brother Hank was also there. It, meaning the rice farm, was more like a marsh. Because over the past month, it rained a ton. So the farm was now turned into a muddy, wet, humid dump. The vehicle my father and I rode... It was a refurnished Volkswagen camper with a roof that can be folded upward to make a second bed. Though, it would always get moist up there and the camper's AC was broken, so it got hot fast. We arrived at the farm and unpacked. To be expected, I instantly unfolded the top. Big mistake. At least a gallon of water that was at least a month old poured down on top of me, completely soaking me. My father and Hank were laughing their butts off, 
as I walked out with a look of disgust and silently scowled and muttered curses at them. Later, we all walked to the shooting range, which was a good 15 minute walk away. When we get there, I was once again taken aback by the look of the area. It wasn't even close to resembling a shooting range. All there was was dense trees, a stream with a natural land bridge, and a clear opening with no targets. You lied to me, I yelled at my father. But before I could continue, Hank walked over with targets on stakes and started planting. Feeling dumb and guilty, I apologized. Hank had just finished up staking the targets when I asked where the guns were. As soon as I asked, my father handed me a 9mm, so I just stood there. I had never touched a firearm before. It was strange. Of course, this is what all people go through when they first touch a gun. He got out his own firearm, a special 38 revolver. Hank had his own military class Desert Eagle. I asked how much it cost. He responded with more than my phone. We all laughed. Hank handed me earbuds and told me to plug them into my ears. Right as I asked him why I needed them, the roaring BOOM of my father's revolver rang out loudly. I stumbled around and was kind of stunned. My ears were ringing. I thought it was bleeding. Hank said sarcastically, because of that. So I responded in a daze. I put my earbuds in just in time when Hank shot off his. Desert Eagle numerous times at the targets. Even with my earbuds in, I could still hear the boom of each individual shot. So my dad taps my shoulder. I turn towards him. He tells me to go on. What? He simply answered. Just tell you to shoot. I have seen movies of how people hold and fire a handgun without suffering a bruised or broken hand. So I leveled my arm, squeezing the trigger. It was interesting. That feeling of power and disbelief you have that everybody has when they first fire a gun. The shot took me by complete surprise. Its power blew my hand backwards like nothing I have ever felt before. The bullet flew in the air and struck the target straight in the center. I was taken aback by this luck of accuracy, expecting my aim to look like that of a stormtrooper if you get the reference. My dad then took me to the stream and gave me his 38 special. See that? He asked me, pointing in the water. I looked and saw a single plastic water bottle, peacefully lying on the water's surface. I told him yes. He explained to me to aim for the water bottle. I took aim, feeling confident that I could hit it. This can't be too bad of a kickback. I told myself in my mind. Besides, what's the difference between these two? I fired. Big, fat mistake. Not only did I just barely miss the bottle, which sent a geyser of water into the air along with the bottle, but the kickback bruised my hand. I dropped the gun, collapsing onto my knees, clenching my right hand in pain. It turns out, a 38 Special was the handgun's version of a shotgun. The injury, as Hank said, was minor, and it would be gone within some hours. Hank, however, said he would not be joining us for the hunt tonight. Some hours passed, and it was now getting dark. It was around dusk. I was on the top part of the camper, which has dried, texting my boyfriend when my dad told me that it was time to go to the duck blind. I left my phone, hopped down. He explained, don't forget your boots. So I quickly put the oversized boots on and tried running towards my father, which ended up with me almost face planting into the mud. I then had to waddle my way to him. By the time I eventually got there, he was already sitting in the blind. I jumped in to join him. Disgusting, reeking water splashed up and some got in my mouth. The taste was beyond revolting, like spoiled milk and meat mixed with bad beer. I was spraying spit, trying to get the liquid out of my taste buds. My father just snickered. I grunted to him. Not five minutes in, I wanted out. 
It reeked like raw sewage, almost puking several times. Eventually, my father got fed up with my constant bickering and complaining and let me go. I booked it, waddling back to the camper. I waited for my father that seemed like an eternity. I then realized that it was unusually quiet. Normally, it was loud with the other bugs and stuff, but nothing was making a sound. It was very uncomfortable. Then, it got hot. Very hot. What the? I said out loud to myself. It was literally at least 70 degrees. Now, it felt like it was around 150. Out of nowhere, a single shot rang out in the near darkness. I jumped, stared out into the poor lighted environment, and a single silhouetted figure was walking towards the camper. I yelled out, assuming it was my father. No response. It wasn't until the figure got closer that I knew whoever or whatever this was. It was not my father. My dad was five foot six. This person was at least seven, maybe eight feet tall. And then I saw who or what it was, at least the silhouette. It was massive, with broad shoulders and arms that just went a little past the knees. It had long taloned fingers. Two curved horns protruded from its head, and its hair flowed beautifully, somewhat in the wind. A snake-like tail at least three, maybe four feet long, slithering in the air, as if it had a mind of its own. But the detail that gave me mini heart attack and severe PTSD was the thing's wings. It had four in total, and the top ones were huge, while the lower ones were shorter, yet thinner. That brought me back to the horrible memory of the time that I came face to face with the creature I just talked about earlier in the beginning of the story. Then, it sprinted away. It was so fast that it was gone in the blink of an eye. It was terrifying. The door suddenly opened, and I scream, Jesus, why did you do that? My dad demanded. I raged back, well, I was going to ask you the same thing. He demanded me to tell him why I was out there when I supposedly left, complaining, Dad, can we go? And come with me, Dad, I need to show you something. I told him that I was in the bunk of the camper and that I didn't know what he was talking about. He didn't believe me. It was now night, and visibility was practically down to zero. My father was already snoring, but I was wide awake pondering over if I really saw this creature that I had ran into several years back out the window earlier. So, I came to the conclusion that it was probably just my mind playing tricks on me, dropped my head on my pillow, and boom, I'm unconscious to the world. I don't know what time it was when I heard it. A scream. But it sounded like the screams of a thousand people and animals, all in unison. That was able to wake me up from dead sleep. I mean nothing, nothing can wake me up from a dead sleep, but this did. I was wide-eyed, my blood went cold, and I was shaking like a leaf, and the temperature was soaring hot. Damn, why did you turn the temp up? I jumped, nailing the back of my head with the top of the ceiling. It was my dad. He grumbled as he lowered the temp in the camper. That's when the noises of insects returned and the temperature went back down. My dad dropped on his pillow and went back to snoring, as well as me, except with the obnoxiously loud snoring. I woke up to the slim daylight through the narrow slits of the blinds. I raised the blinds to see fog. Just creepy fog. There was now zero visibility beyond two feet from the window. I looked down to find my surprise that my dad was gone. I climbed down and found a note that matched my father's handwriting. It said that if I saw this note, he was in the duck blind. I was babbling. How can he see through this? Whatever. I made breakfast, ate, and changed. I opened the door to be met with a near scorching heat. And something else as well. The regurgitating stench of something rotten. I almost puked. It was like inhaling the stench of a sewer, 
the odor of a dead animal that had been out for some days and wet dog. I quickly went back in, grabbed the gas mask my dad kept beneath his mattress, put it on, and went back out. It was hot, and the fog was like that from the movie The Mist. Then, that's when I realized something was terribly wrong. It was too quiet. Something was wrong. Feeling that, I was being watched. Instinct now kicked in and I ran back in. If this was in someone else's viewpoint, they would say that I walked confidently with my 9mm. Yeah, I was quote-unquote confident. No, I was scared. I go into the fog, walking around for about a good three minutes, then stopped. I froze in horror to the realization that I was lost in fog. That's when the demonic screams came into play again. Something that sounded like it was imitating hundreds of human and non-human screams in some kind of sick choir, roaring in the fog. If you ever played Halo, then you definitely know what the sounds of the Flood Horde is like. And this, what I heard, has to be the closest sound that I can reference this to. I twirled, only to see nothing. Then another roar. This one louder, closer, rang out. I was literally close to screaming myself. That's when I saw movement. It was so fast that my mind could not keep up with what had just happened. It was a practical blur, and the stench was so bad that I could smell it through the mask. I ripped the mask off, and this foul, wretched odor slammed and burned into my nostrils. That's when I looked down to see a horribly mangled deer buck. The buck was big, except that all four legs were torn off with brute force, and its head was now torn off too. But its antlers were jammed into the eyes. I vomited. I saw movement again, put the mask back on, even though it didn't really keep the stench back. I was twirling around, waving the gun like some lunatic, screaming, Whoever's out here screwing with me better stop. I have a handgun, and I'm not afraid to pump you full of lead. Then, something slamming into me, sending me flying. It was like that of a car ramming into you, and I fortunately landed in the disgusting water of Rice Farm. And that's when I saw it clearly. I screamed at the very brink of my lungs. This was no man. There was no mistake. This was that beast that I saw years ago. Its appearance never changed one bit since the last I saw it blood-like skin color, its sternum protruding outwards, long arms with taloned fingers, four wings, a long tail, long black hair with curved red horns, glowing yellow eyes, and that absolutely hideous and human-toothed grin. This thing screamed again, and I had to plug my ears with my fingers. Even with the sound deafened, the sound of many human and non-human screams synchronized into one horrible version that could be heard. Out of desperation, I unloaded the entirety of my handgun's magazine at this thing. I gazed in absolute disbelief and horror as the bullets merely bounced off the stone-like skin. With no other choice, I ran. As I was running, the stench vanished. As I ripped the gas mask, I could hear the thing talk to me in my head. Its voice was like that of thirty people in horrible agony, all talking the same time. You and the others are not supposed to be here. Leave now, or I will hunt you all down. This is my warning to you. I was more than ecstatic to hear this, and I booked it. Nearly two minutes in, the familiar voice of Hank echoing in the fog, screaming my name, asking where I was. I bolted to the source of the sound, and with tears, near the brink of turning into a waterfall along with wide open arms. I slammed into Hank, nearly knocking him over. And at that point, I didn't hold back any sign of toughness and let out a stream of tears. He brought me back to the camper where my dad was standing with his hunting shotgun. As we get closer, I run to my dad with tears now, coming out like a waterfall. My dad gazed at me, he tells me he was worried sick and asked what had happened. 
I was about to answer when two figures now started walking toward us. I was beginning to panic until they were fully in view. Two state troopers with their unique hats and tan-colored uniforms. One of them explained that they had rushed over when they had heard the sound of a gun going off. Apparently, it was not hunting season, but my dad did not know that. When they arrived, they found my dad looking desperately for something. As they pulled to the camper, my dad dropped his gun and immediately began to explain to the troopers that I had gone missing about five, maybe eight minutes ago. So, he fired off a shot like a sound flare so I would find my way back. The other trooper grabbed his walkie-talkie and said, Missing girl found. Then, my dad asked what happened. The other trooper also listened. In the end, though, my dad and the troopers believed that, that it must have been some sort of sick freak wearing a monster suit that attacked me. After signing some paperwork to the other trooper, we packed up our things and followed the state troopers out of the rice farm. But as the fog started to lift, I saw those glowing eyes out in the field and the shape of that creature. I glared at it with such anger I wanted to just jump out of the moving van and pummel that thing senseless. I could hear its voice again. You made the decision of leaving. Remember this for all the rest of your days. And with that, it sprinted away like into the woods like a bolt of lightning, screaming all the way as if it was sticking its middle finger at me, metaphorically. Thank you very much for hearing my story. I know that people would never believe it, but I know you would. Thank God this didn't get to the news. The last thing I want is for people to be coming to my door or getting the government on my butt for this. It was very traumatic for me and gave me nightmares for weeks. And sometimes, I swear, I could still hear it.